Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I'm excited to share with all of you an unboxing and first look at the brand new NVIDIA Titan X. Now, you may have noticed I didn't say GTX, and there's a reason. This card is no longer considered a gaming card, and for good reason. At $1,200, US it does yield 30% more performance than the current champion, the GTX 1080, but... NVIDIA has decided to put the Titan X in a class of its own. Now, you may recall the Titan X did come out uh, March of uh, 2015, so it did last over a year, which is a good thing, uh, but we already have a new one, and uh, yes, it's more expensive than the last gen, Pascal architecture, just like the 1080, 12 gigs of RAM, but with DDR5X, just like uh, what you're finding in the new generation of cards from NVIDIA. You will need a 600 uh, watt power supply or greater in order to power this card. A 6 and 8 pin connector for those of you that are curious. That's actually less than the EVGA uh, FTW uh, 1080 that I'm running now that requires two 8 pin connectors but it does have a custom cooling system. Uh, it will take up two PCI Express slots uh, and beyond that, well, not much more to know, you know, 8 gigs of system uh, RAM, but clearly if you're spending $1,200 on a card like this, I think you've got more than 8 gigs of RAM. So with that said, let me get this open. Keep in mind, this card, as I mentioned before, no longer part of the GTX lineup, and that's because um, whether you want to speculate on the fact that NVIDIA is launching a TI version of the 1080 or not, NVIDIA wants to keep this card relevant. And that's a good way of doing that. They're calling it a deep learning card. And that's because they realize that with this sort of computational prowess, this is more than just right now the top of the line gaming option. And that is, by the way, where the Titan X stands currently because with 30 times, uh, excuse me, 30 more uh, percent performance than the GTX 1080, nothing can touch this. Uh, with even more than a 10-foot pole. You've got uh, over 3,500 CUDA cores. That's a substantial increase uh, from the 2,500 and change that the 1080 has, a substantial increase from even the previous Gen Titan X. This is a Founders Edition uh, card, so it does have the new Founders Edition uh, styling, which, whether you like it or not, really is less relevant, that I think, to most gamers than the performance that it actually yields. Let me get this thing out of its wrapper so you can see exactly what this piece of candy looks like. And, you know, some consider this a bragging right. To me, it's a matter of whether or not you actually can utilize this. Uh, this is really a card like every Titan uh, since the Z that has been about giving you the best of both worlds. Not only one of the best gaming cards on the market, but also one of the most powerful GPUs for rendering software. So if you're looking to have... One card that can do it all, especially even if you're just speaking in terms of 4K gaming, a single card solution, you're not interested in SLI, this is a great way to go. Consider, on, uh, on the other hand, though, you are paying a significant premium. You're talking about $699 for a GTX 1080, uh, whereas here, again, $1,200 US plus tax. That's a very big difference for 30% more performance. But if you can afford it, why would you hesitate? This is really going to be unmatched for at least 10 months to a year. Uh, for those of you wondering when the you know, 1080 Ti will come out, I'm not so sure because right now with the uh, still very short supply of GTX 1080s in general, that doesn't lead me to believe that the market window is as large as many of you may think. Uh, on the other hand, I do know that Nvidia has plenty of headroom uh, between this $1,200 price and the $699 Founders Edition 1080s and the even less expensive non-Founders Edition 1080s to fit a 1080 Ti into the lineup. But I don't think this time around they will allow it to have the performance of this card uh, even with less RAM. Uh, they kept the 12 gigs of RAM because really there are no games that still can even approach utilizing the 12 gigs, but I wouldn't be shocked in a year from now if we do start to see games get there. Of course, DirectX 12 compatible, a base clock of 1417, and a boost clock of 1531. You can see we've got one HDMI 2.0 uh, 2 port and three display ports and a DVI uh, port on the back there, and that's pretty much it. Uh, definitely, I think a nice design. I still you know, prefer reference-type cards, even though now they're known as Founders Edition. 
Do I like this design more than the old? Eh, not so much. Uh, I preferred the more industrial clean lines, but again, we're not here for that. We're here for the performance. Otherwise, packaging is very similar to last gen. We have our paperwork. NVIDIA includes a little, or at least they used to, a little decal for you so that you can brag that you've got the, the biggest beast on the block. But again, what it really comes down to is whether or not you need a card with this type of competency. And that's why, as I mentioned before, they're saying deep learning, they're talking about it being more than a gaming GPU, and that's because it is. I mean, when you've got a card that arguably has more RAM than, it's, than it requires in a system, again, remember eight gigs of system memory required to put this into your box, you know, you're talking about a beast. And that was the same with last generation, except now we have all the advantages of Pascal and DDR5X. Uh, so this is really the card to beat right now. The price, on the other hand, of course, definitely steep, but don't expect it to come down. Uh, even with the launch of the 980 Ti, which gave very similar gaming performance, a lot of people didn't stray from their Titan X uh, last year, and it still has held value quite well. Now with the launch of the brand new Titan X, that's a different story, but that tends to be the case when a successor hits the block. Nobody expected, though, that this would come so soon. Uh, NVIDIA clearly has been making their cycles shorter. Uh, but that pretty much sums things up. I'll be benching this against uh, my current 1080, which is the EVGA uh, for the win, uh, which has a you know higher uh, clock rate, especially overclocking capability, a little bit better cooling, arguably, but nowhere near the CUDA cores or performance that this uh, reference design or Founders Edition has out of the box. Forget about the memory capabilities. Uh, again, deep learning, folks. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.